Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Today I will start working on getting this car out of here, pretty much. Uh, no, I haven't given up on it at all, but I need it to be movable so I can get it out to work on all the other stuff that I'm currently working on. My plan is still to start working on this a little bit later when I finish up some of my other projects. But to do that, I need this to move. First thing, I need to do something about the rear axle. At the moment, it has let go on the rear mounts, so it's pretty much on the floor. I think if I succeed at starting the engine, it will, if the hydraulic system work, I think it will actually push the rear bridge into the floor, maybe bend the drive shafts and all that, that wouldn't be good. In this video, I will make some kind of hack repair. It won't be permanent, but I just need it to be attached to the actual car. So first thing, I'm gonna jack up the car and put in some jack stand so I can take a better look at that. Let's see if this just goes through the floor. Fingers crossed, but it could end up just being a crushed car, to be honest. <laughs> Let's see if it helps, if it holds up at the sills. That seems all right. Yeah, hmm, not bad. <clears throat> A good start, to be honest, because if it went through the sills, then not a good day. So, are we ready for this? <laughs> Please don't laugh, because it's most likely pretty bad down here. actually a flaw down here, so it's not all bad. There is rust though, but uh, not as... Well, it could be worse at least, but this video is not about rust or the bottom end of the car or anything like that. I would like to inspect it when I get it running, um, so I can get it on the lift and not climb around down here. What the problem is that I need to fix today is this is some kind, I'm pretty sure it's a home build mount because it doesn't look like this when I find the part. Um, but the part is no longer available, so even though I could, so I, it doesn't seem to be possible to get one. So I might have to, f to redo something or make something up. Uh, but today I'm just gonna do a, a quick fix. This one is supposed to be attached to this one, of course, and uh, the front one to attach to this stud down there. But what I want to do is to try to remove this one, and it seems it's spalled through right there from the inside of the car in the boot. So I'm gonna do that first. And to do that, I'm gonna remove everything from inside of the car and put it over there on my table, because we need all those parts to uh, get this car running. Firstly, we have the light. One of them has lost the glass, but the glass is inside of there, so that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a big deal to fix. Oh yeah, this will save everything. Brand new set of wiper blades. Blade, because it only needs one. How nice is that? That will save me a lot of money. Oh, a spanner. Nice. I think this is the third unit of this kind I've found so far. So something tells me there is an issue with, uh, with that maybe. That's the injector by the way. Jack and spare wheel. 
not spare wheel, it's actually the right wheel. There's a spare on the car. And the paperwork that is going inside. A bit of jewelry. Wow. Really nice. I'm make, I will make sure to wear that whenever I drive this car. Well, I suspect that I can lift up this in one way or another. I would maybe just like this. That reveals sound deadening material. At first glance, it looks pretty nice actually. But uh, it is hard to say because there is all this protection material all over it. But it looks pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I think the mounts for that thingy. It's maybe underneath these. Could it be that? Wow. I do think I tend to be fairly lucky with these with these sight unseen cars. I <laughs> always think that they are completely rusted up, but it's not that bad so far. Take a look at this amount of rust protection there is down there. This is a good sign. But what I want to do is to try to undo that bolt. To un Something fell down at least. Yep. That'll do it. Woohoo! Oh yeah, it's out. As you can see, someone fitted wooden blocks in here. Without these, it will be completely lying on its belly. Um, I was actually wondering why it was that high, but that's the reason. I'm not going to remove them because I don't feel confident that, that the hydraulic system is going to work if I even get the engine running. I'm pretty sure I got some leaks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got that. There is stuff not connected up back here and all different kind of stuff. So, yeah. But now this is out. Oh, it would be so nice to just have the real mount and then boop, fit it and be done with it. But, uh, yeah, I need to figure out something else. I have found a uh, solution that I'm going with. It, it It's not... It's just for now, of course, but what I'm going to do is to take these rubbers because that's the right dimensions, maybe. I never, I don't know if they measured that back then, but I know that this worked before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole all the way through this and then put a bolt and then bolt it all back together. That will, of course, give some vibrations, I guess, but uh, as I said, it's just to drive the car in and out of the garage. I'm pretty sure that I am going to drop this subframe at one point and clean it up and all that. So then I can take a better look at this. So this is what I'm going to do now. So there we go. Let's go ahead and try to screw that into position. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. Like that, and then I'm just going to let the jack down.
the subframe is now fully attached to the car. <laughs> I hope at least that part of it is. So this makes it possible to move it. It will still be really low, but it won't be dragging along the floor or the, or the ground. So that will be a big difference, of course. So um, I won't remove those wooden blocks because I don't think that the hydraulic system is working just yet. Ah, that's way better. Way better. <laughs> so I took the liberty to move the car as far as, as far as I could back. So I have a bit of room to work on the, uh, on the business end of this car. Then I took all the engine parts from the rear compartment of the car and put them on this table. I don't know how much of this we're going to need, but some of it, some of it at least, but some of it I can see is already on the car. And over here there are three pieces of those um, idle air control valve, I think it is. So um, yeah. But we're going to need this one because that's the pickup or the crank positioning sensor, if it works, who knows. But let's try and figure out what needs to be done to get this engine to run. The first thing I want to do is to remove all the loose stuff from here. And then I would like to just quickly take out the spark plugs and just see if I can see anything and then spin, spin the engine without spark plugs to just check for uh, oil pressure. It's a good thing that I have worked on these engines before, but it's quite a long time back. But it's not completely new. That's good enough for testing at least. Okay, that, that was not tight. Oh, this feels really bad. These engines are all aluminum, which is uh, cool for weight and cool for a lot of stuff, but also not good at heat and not strong in threats and so on. I'm just trying to move it gently forward and backwards to just hopefully avoid taking the threads with it. But I really don't like the feel of this. Okay, so it actually came out. And then I'm going to squirt some oil down there to just help the rings and the boss when I try to spin it. I'm not going to check if the engine spins because when we took this off the trailer, uh, it, it's very steep out there. The brakes was of course not uh, working, so uh, I had to use the gears to, to stop it. And I could hear the engine turn, turn over. So, uh, not the best way to do it, but uh, I had to do that. So I know the engine is not stuck, so I'm not going to try to turn it over beforehand, but I would like to spin it and get some oil pressure before we go any further. And again, there is a million different opinions about how to start up an engine that has been standing for a long time. And I tend to be more careful if the engine is really rare. It's not a rare engine, this one. Uh, so I'm not that careful. Oh, these battery terminals are bad. Let's go into the cabin and see. Whoop. Okay, here we are. Before I forget, I want to do one thing. This down here determines the height of the vehicle. Low, normal, high, and service mode. Service mode is the mode you can put it in if you need to change a tire or something like that, or unload or load the, press, load the system or unload the system. But I'm gonna put it into the lower one, if it moves. Ah, it doesn't. It is stuck. It's just because if it's in the lower position, then I presume that it won't try to pressurize the, uh, the, uh, the system, because I'm pretty sure it will leak. 
if the engine starts, but uh, that's not moving, so uh, we'll just have to see. So ignition, well, we got lights and all different kind of stuff. The door is open. <laughs> the watch started working. The oil uh, control thingy that measures how much oil is in the engine seems to work because it's at minimum and it shows that as well on that one. Ah, wait a second, it's just stuck. <laughs> Starting to do something, but not really. It's just frantic all over the place. Very citrine. Anyway, what I want to do right now, I don't hear any fuel pump priming, and I, I assume there is no ECU connected to this car because there's two in the uh, in the stash over there. So uh, I don't think there is any ECU, and I'm pretty sure that controls the fuel pump. So I don't think we're going to have any fuel spilling out anywhere. But let's try to spin it just really quick and see if it turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty okay. Not the fastest moving, but I think the connections on the battery is really bad. I need to change the, the terminals, uh, I think, before going much further. But I want to see if we can get the oil light to go out. I'm not really counting on this system to really, or the dash to really work. But what I want to see is the red light go out right over there. It's, it's just out instantly. Maybe it's the glow plug. That's the oil pressure. I can hear the tone change. So I, I, I can actually hear the oil pressure. But I have no indicator showing me the oil pressure. But I can hear the oil pressure uh, arrive. It changes the tone completely on an engine. Let's try again. Oh yeah, I think it is the red light because now it's off. I expect it to come back any second now. Yeah, we got oil pressure on this engine. And it spins. <laughs> I hear a slushing sound in the engine bay. That could be the coolant or something like that. But I don't hear anything in this region of the car. So if I'm really lucky, the fuel tank is completely empty. Normally that wouldn't be necessarily a good thing because that would mean it would rust a lot. But this is a plastic fuel tank. So maybe I'm lucky that it is sort of clean in there and empty. Because if there's old fuel from from 2010 in here, it won't, won't work. Um, of course, this tank could still be full of crap, even though it's not made of metal. Just watch up and down uh, videos on the tomato. That tank was full of wood lice, so uh, you never know. But what I want to do now is to fit an ECU. I expect there is none in the car at the moment because there is two of them in the stash. It is supposed to be under the passenger seat, so I'm just gonna have a look there. I'm gonna fit it and then put the ignition on. Then I expect the fuel pump to prime. It could maybe just prime. Maybe it primes, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I have to turn the key to make it run. But I want to try that and see if fuel comes out the uh, fuel hose in the engine bay. If nothing comes out, then I expect the fuel tank to be empty, if I can hear the fuel pump, that is. Uh, and then I'm gonna fill in some fresh fuel and see if that arrives at the fuel line. In the stash there are two ECUs. They both seem to be for the BX 1.9 from 88 to 94. This one is a B05, this is a B02, this is a Bendix, and this is a Siemens. I don't know the difference. So I'm gonna try with the higher number because that equals more power. And yep, we got a connector right in there with the ECU connected right down there. Let's try to put it into ignition and see if we can hear a, a fuel priming sound. I can hear a relay at least, but I'm not sure I can hear a pump. It's supposed to be an inspection hole down here somewhere. 
Ugh. It smells a bit like mouse piss down here, actually. There's also some excrements and, and food. <laughs> oh no! On the other hand, there is a fairly clean looking fuel tank. I think you will be able to see more than I am able to. Down there. Hopefully it looks all right. Please, please, please say something if it's completely full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me a lot about the game My Summer Car because suddenly you just have parts scattered all around. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and fit this fuel, this one to the fuel tank. Just uh, vacuum up anything I can from the fuel tank and then fit this and hopefully make it uh, do something. I have just fitted the crankshaft positioning sensor and the connector itself is not that good because the clip is missing, but it should be good enough to get a signal at least. So let's try to see if this makes a difference to the fuel pump because now I think the ECU should see a impulse from that connector or from that sensor from the crankshaft and that should fire the fuel pump if this system is similar to the to the Renault. And I think it is, it is a PSA car after all. So let's try. Not really, but what I don't see either is any kind of impulse on the on the ref counter. So I don't think there is no any signal from the crank sensor, but it could be uh, other stuff as well. I can't really remember how this system works and what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. One thing I could do was to fit everything before trying, but I would just like to go one step at a time to just make sure that all the components along the way is working. But um, I will have to stop for now because I will have to do some research, reading a little bit up on this engine management system to avoid wasting too much time. And also it's late. I have some stuff to do tomorrow, which is unfortunately not car related. Um, therefore, I will have to end this video now. We didn't get the car to run, but we got it to turn. And it seems as though a lot of stuff is actually working, um, surprisingly, in the electrical compartment. Um, we got the rear axle attached to the car, which is also a nice thing. So next video, hopefully, will be one step closer and maybe even getting there to getting this car to run. I don't think it takes a lot, but there is this unknown thing about all these parts that were taken off the car. As one of you guys mentioned, maybe the story that I was told was parts from this car was used in fault finding on another BX. So maybe all these parts that I got are from the other BX that turned out to be defective and then just put into here. So I could end up having a lot of defective parts that I'm just frantic trying to put on. That could be the case. I know I can measure out the crank sensor and stuff like that to figure out if it works or doesn't. But um, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of loose ends in this engine bay at the moment, so there can be so much wrong. But what I would like to do is to get some fuel pressure, get some spark, and then fit stuff back together. But before that, I think I need to understand a bit more about that engine management system. So it's off to my computer and my office and try to read a little bit on the Danish manual and all that. So thank you for watching. Thank you for the support I get on Patreon and see you in the next one and good night.